Okay, code conversion. Code conversion is, remember, code, pattern of bits, used to represent Code pattern of bits used to represent information. So basically an encoder, all it does is take the info, make a pattern of bits, and then a decoder takes the pattern of bits, makes some information. So a encoder, b decoder. Um, think about uh yeah, goes to code. Translates back to info. So, an example, um, let's use our wind direction indicator. Wind's blowing on it this way and it just spirals around the flag. And it says wind is coming from the north. All the encoder does is it takes the fact that the north is there and encodes it to. Uh, code for north. Now you're in the nacelle and what you've got down here is the code for north because the, this thing's on the outside. This guy nacelle. The speed indicator's there but now you're inside the nacelle looking at the screen. So the encoder right there, the decoder, the code is going that way. And all the, code, uh, the decoder does it takes the code for north and displays it on a screen. North. It's uh, basically it's just a means of display. Um, another thing about code conversion too, I should mention. There's a code converter, straight up code converter. So encoder, decoder. Now imagine if there's two different um, computer systems, all speaking two speaking two totally different uh, languages, two different codes. You'd have to convert the code for north and it goes into a code converter. It's still code for north. Código por norte. So that's Espanol. English. Uh, English. Okay, so that's all it is. It's just a translator. Code converter. So three cases. Encoder, decoder, code converter. Okay, next. Where's my papers? Let's go back. One second, let's pause. Okay, next um, logic um, function is the data selection. There's two dubs, multiplexing, demultiplexing. Story multiplexer on um, my senior project for VLSI was to design a multiplexer. So I actually know this quite a lot, quite a lot of it. Okay. All this does is switches data, switches digital data. Digital data from several sources onto single line for specified time. So if you could think of multiplexer, here's three systems. Here A B and C. There's our single line going out. Think of the multiplexer as a little railroad switch. Basically, in this position, A is sending data out this way. But now, at specified time interval,
it switches to here. So these zooms. So for that time interval, it was A, B, and it's the signals propagating in this direction. So then all of a sudden, specified time interval, C comes along, and all it does is that road switch switches over to C. The signals are propagated down the wire. So there's A followed by B followed by C. That's all it's doing, just sending data back and forth. And so, yeah, again, it's basically just takes, uh, takes blocks of time and divides it up there. How does it do that? This thing right here is the fourth input for this three uh, multiplexer. It's basically a switch sequence control. It's a very fancy name for the clock. Remember, the clock itself carries no information. It's just a timing sequence there. And so like all it's doing is saying switch now, switch now, switch now, switch now. OK, so this doesn't make sense. Uh, if you're just sending data out, you've got to have something on this side to receive. And this is where you have a D multiplexer. This is on this end of it. So it's got computer D, E, and F. And all the D multiplexer is is it takes this, it's got another railroad switch in there, and it says go to D. And then it says at specified time interval, again determined by the clock, it says go to E. Specified time interval, go to F. So all that thing is doing is just flip flopping back and forth in between that. And it's all controlled by the clock. So this, again, basically the D multiplexer is the opposite, just takes blocks of time, uh, excuse me, just takes up those blocks of time and puts them where they're supposed to go to. Um, so this is called TDM, time division multiplexing. Um, there's another type called frequency division multiplexing, and if you guys, anybody has DSL at home, this is very similar to this, where your analog uh, telephone voice signal, um, it's on the same line, it's not like they put in a new line, it's just another signal is on top of it at a different frequency, and that's why you have to have that little uh, thing that looks like this plug there. for your phone, because that all it, all it does is basically it just filters out the DSL signal. DSL coming in, and here's your phone coming out of there. Basically, all this thing is is a DSL filter. Yeah, we don't even need to be talking about this. Let's talk about something else. Um, storage. 